So today I'm gonna do a shop tour and show you guys all around. I'm Lynn and this is the Darwin Orbit Channel. So I'm really excited to do this. I've been meaning to do a shop tour for the longest time, so I'm happy to finally get to it. Okay, so the shop is pretty much my backyard. First of all, I have the carport, which is the power tool shop. I have the indoor shop, where I mostly do hand tools, assembly, and electronics work. Uh, then you may see that there is the fire pit in the middle that I use to burn scraps. And I also have the patio table setting, which is meant to be a chess table slash dining table. However, it usually works as wood storage with the canopy over there, especially during the winter months. So this is the main shop where all the wood gets cut and processed. I have found that it helps to have kind of like a little triangle going here with the most frequently used tools. So I have the table saw here, band saw over here, and miter saw over here. And I really like that going from one tool to another, there's not a very long distance in between the two. So this is a great setup for that. So this is a saw stop, a job site table saw that I have set up in the middle of the room and I really like having it in the middle here because I, you know, with in feed, out feed, there's a lot of space. I have just a regular shop vac hooked up to it and I'm going to update the dust control setup eventually. Uh, but right now that works well. So I got a couple of jigs for the table saw. This is the cross cut slash box joint jig that I actually made for the previous DeWalt table saw, although I have modified it so it works here. I think I'm gonna make uh, new jigs though, dedicated specifically for this saw. All accessories and stuff for the table saw I have in this section here. So push sticks, other jigs, gripper, uh, all of those things so I know where they are. So this is my main band saw. This is the Laguna 1412. And I really like how this is on a rolling base so that I can roll it and put it in the middle of this space and that way I have a good amount of space for in feed and out feed. I usually have a resaw blade on here. There's no blade on there right now. I'm about to put a, a new one on. This is my other small bandsaw. This is a Ryobi 9 inch and I really get a lot of use out of this one. I like that I can have a smaller blade on here consistently. I can have the resaw on the big one and I can come in here and do small cuts every now and then. So that's really helpful. I really like that. Now I've got a couple of jigs for the bandsaw. This is the log cutting jig and when I first made the video about the bandsaw I did show using this one as well. I have a um, cross cut sled for the bandsaw as well, which I like to use for cutting like mallet heads. And then I also have um, a circular jig for the bandsaw, which comes in handy every now and then. Now these jigs take up a lot of space, so I'm still trying to figure out where and how to store them properly. If we turn around this way, this is where I have uh, another workstation with the miter saw and the lathe. So this is my rigid miter saw and I built this stand specifically to hold it and I really like it for the in-feed and out-feed, provides a lot of space. Then I have my lathe over here, this is the mini Excelsior lathe. It's a pretty small lathe but I got a lot of use out of it. Behind I have like the lathe tools, mask, cover. <laughs> So I usually bolt this down whenever I use it, but it's also nice to be able to move it in when I need more space for the miter saw or when I'm using the DIY jointer, then I put it here as well and I get a nice amount of space in and out with the wood. This is my planer. It's pretty heavy, so I put it on this uh, stand with wheels. So I wheel it out and I put it in the middle over there for more in-feed, out-feed whenever I use it, so that works out well. And over here I have the uh, router stand. This is a Rockler router table and lift with a photo cable router. And over on the wall here I have storage for all the router bits and accessories. Previously I had all of my gardening tools and stuff like that in here. But after building the gardening shed out there, I was able to move all of that stuff to make more room for woodworking and that kind of stuff in here as well as wood. So. If you look around here, you see that there's a lot of maple at the moment. Most of this is maple and that's because I'm working on the uh, counter for the maker space. Uh, but I'm planning on organizing the space a little bit better, probably building cabinets and things like that. 
Um, this project here I did pretty recently. This is like a sanding slash sharpening station. It is on wheels so I can wheel it out to plug things in. So I have like a grinder and a sander and things like that on top as well as a vise. And inside of these drawers I have like circular saw and sanders and things like that. In here I have my DIY jointer which I move out to the table whenever I need to use it. Uh, here's the CNC machine, which also I bring into the shop whenever I need to use it. Takes up a lot of room otherwise. And up there I have a wet saw, as well as paint sprayer in the back. So over here I have a whole bunch of wood being stored. And you can see that there's plastic here, and that's because this is in an open carport and the wind and the rain kind of comes in. So right now I'm just putting plastic up during the rainy season and take it off during the summer. Eventually I like to be able to close this in it's on the list of projects to get into. So I have been collecting all of these tools for years um, and that's because I usually pick up something new to help me complete each project and I've probably done like hundreds of projects. Um, but of course everyone's shop has a different level of tool collection and I know it can be very helpful to have the option to finance a new tool purchase when you need it for a new project. Um, and if you would like to help me support my channel, then I would really appreciate it if you clicked on the link in the description below to the Home Depot card. And there you can read all about the great benefits this card has to offer. Uh, so yeah, check out the link in the description below. It would really help me out. And now I want to show you guys the indoor shop. So this is my indoor shop and it is a pretty small space. It's about the size of a one car garage or about 12 by 16 feet. Now I have tried really hard to make this space very useful. Every square inch of the walls are pretty much covered and I'm constantly trying to find new little nooks and areas uh, to store things on. And I think I've done a pretty good job as of right now to kind of find places for things. But I have found that when you have a small shop like this, it's very useful to create zones for different types of work. I have hand tool and assembly work, fasteners and storage, electronics, tinker area, extra workspace, and like an office computer area over there. I would say the number one tool in the shop is the bench. It's the one thing that I constantly go back to and that's get used over and over and over again. I really like having the bench in the middle of the room. I think it helps the workflow and that you can access things from all sides. Originally I was thinking about having it against the wall and I just don't really like that. I think this is much more useful. Um, not to mention I have wood storage under here. I actually try to put wood storage wherever I can and it's nice to be able to access it from both sides. This bench, however, is really beat up and I am thinking slash working on making a new one. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that as I have been working with this, I realized that I really want a tail vise. There really is no space for that here. So I would like to make a sturdier bench out of maple and I think I might make it a little bit smaller because I realized I don't really need it to be quite this big. It is kind of amazing how much things change over the years. I feel like this shop is constantly in flux. Uh, things are being moved, changed, uh, built, and then disassembled again. And I think that is just the way a small space like this kind of needs to evolve. One of the first things I built in this shop was this wall, this storage unit here, and it holds a lot of stuff. Now this is the tool wall, and this has most of the hand tools that I use the most. And I really like to be able to access things really easily. What tools do I use the most out of here? Uh, well, first of all, the planes. I use the planes a lot, so I have a scrub plane, low angle jack plane, smoothing plane, a block plane, got the chisels. Uh, this is probably my most frequently used chisel. This is a Mortensen chisel that I use for the mallets. And then of course a spoke shape here I use a lot too, as well as mallets on the wall. Various measuring related things, rulers, and then of course like marking gauges. Here's another marking gauge. A little shoulder plane here that uh, gets used every now and then. So basically things are constantly in flux and I was thinking about making like a nicer cabinet in this area that uh, maybe has different areas and like some doors. You can fill more things in layers. So that is definitely on the list of projects I want to work on. 
But in general, I've just stored a lot of things on this wall. I mean, this is just a tool wall, but then there's a lot of shelves here too that hold a lot of stuff, like the drills and sandpaper, and I have finishing stuff above, waxes. Anything that I use a lot, I like to have easy access to. Here's the drawer uh, from the slab, the hairpin leg table that I didn't end up using, so I figured oh, I might as well put it here for extra storage. Uh, this is the uh, uh, stove top unit I have, and this is what I use when I make my wax polishes. This is where I have like chargers, a heat gun, clamps, glue and tape and staples. So this area here has actually changed quite a bit within the last year, year and a half. Um, I built this unit here and the French cleat wall, the fastener unit, and I really like to use all the space that I can and really make everything very functional. Here I have the drill press. First I actually had the small bandsaw in here and I, I, I liked it but then it also got kind of dusty and you need like more room I feel like with a bandsaw, like in feed and out feed. So I decided to move that back out in the outdoor shop. Uh, but I kept the drill press because it doesn't require that much space and it's just kind of nice to have there. Um, I also have a shop vac above there which can also be moved. And the drill press cabinet where I have bits and things like that. This has been really good. I really like having this cabinet here. Like you always know where the drill bits are and everything is nice and close by. Another change I made recently is that I took almost all of the paint uh, that I had in here and I moved it outside mostly because it was just taking up so much space and I found that I wasn't really using it as much as I thought I would so a lot of it was oil paint anyway so it's fine outside and I just have some paints that I use a lot uh, left in here so this is my electronics area my tinker corner uh, this is all pretty new as well most of these uh, pieces are you know videos on the channel and I also made a shop tour a little while back about all the electronics tools that I have here and that I use. So I'll link that video in the description below. I really like everything here, but what I love is this unit on top here that has all of these little drawers inside here. And I found that it really kind of helps define the space when this is kind of high. Uh, because it feels like you're sitting in your own little corner in the back here. Like it feels separate from the room. And I think that really is great in creating like a work zone, like a great workspace. Not to mention it holds just a ton of these little electronics components. So what I do on this table kind of changes depending on what's going on. Right now it's housing this new 3D printer, which is going to go into the makerspace in the dining room. Um, I haven't played with this too much yet, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, otherwise also sometimes I bring the sewing machine here or assembly work or whatever needs to be done. Another thing too is I have a new stereo up here. This is the receiver that I fixed uh, in the video a couple of weeks ago. And before I had it on this table and it was taking up a lot of space. So I was thinking about where can I put it to get it out of the way. So I just actually got it up here. Uh, and this is perfect. This was really heavy to get up there. Uh, but now it's out of the way and I really like that. And it's all connected so it works really well but this is one of those things when you have a small space you have a small shop and you really need to think about all spaces like go up higher to store more things you can also see up here I have a wood store to have shelves above there as well as clamps I try not to store wood that I, I use a lot up there because it is kind of annoying to get to I have a lot of wood stored underneath the bench as well as smaller pieces in the scrap drawer but wood is kind of positioned everywhere, every corner, depending on what I'm working on. And over here I also have the computer area. Um, so a laptop, printer, uh, cameras in the corner over there. Yeah, I just spend a lot of time here kind of watching videos and working on things in general. So that is the view from here. I also have these lights, studio lights. Here, here I have another one as well that I often use when doing the filming. Most of the tools and materials you're seeing in this shop tour can be purchased using the Home Depot consumer card at the Home Depot. Please visit their site, there's a link in the description for some great offers. Thanks for watching guys!